so you're kind of right above the two, but it reads as directly above. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I first became part of Lisa Frankenstein when I had a meeting with our director, Zelda, and we just had a general Zoom after I read the script, and I just, I didn't even see myself in the role, like I had no idea how to approach this character. It felt like a no-brainer, and it also felt like something that I was so scared of, and Zelda just made me feel like she wanted to do something she wanted to bring back the unreal reality. <laughs> I'm okay. Everyone, it's fine. I'm okay. I'm okay. Which said it counts. That's fantastic. Way to go. Thanks, Daddy. Well, how good is that? How good is that take, huh? Yeah. Happy. Butt munchkins. Butt munchkins. <laughs> it looks great, butt munchkins. Um, and I knew it would be a heavy physical role, so I worked with a mime uh, in Los Angeles for about three, four months. He had some experience fencing. He was a lover, he was a big romantic. Um, he died young, clearly, because when he comes back to life, he's young. Lisa, what, what's up with your nails? Uh. Well, I really love um, Taffy because she's such a fun character to play. She, she's very much like me. She's such a sweetheart. She's genuinely nice to everybody, um, no matter what the situation or circumstance is. <gasps> I'm good. Snow babies. Janet, honey, really would you stay I'm in fine. here? Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Janet lives in Janet's world, for sure. Not a single other person's personality is in one iota of it. It is all Janet. But it inspired me sort of to run with Janet in the sense that she has created and curated a perfect world and a perfect family in her mind, and she cannot imagine how Lisa would not want to be a part of it. How am I going to start some book up? Wait, what? an invasion? Did you call the police? No. Going at you. And then you close the door. And you kind of go up to him and then you whack him. We'll, we'll have Chelsea walk you guys through that because there's going to be a You got I have really enjoyed working with Zelda. I hope that we get to create something again because I trust her and she's fun and cool. And that's really all you want is someone you can just trust. And I am really um, throwing myself down on this movie. I am doing some crazy stuff, like just embarrassing things that you have to know are gonna be okay. Set. And action. Guys, I finally got my standing back tuck. Hey, uh, we see the police like. Yep. Yeah, he's gonna uh, show them all. And, hey, locations, yeah. if there's any way that our officer at the Cypress Law can determine if he's not gonna do it. Oh, it's not gonna be good. I found out that my friend was attached to direct Zelda. And Zelda and I have been really close for about seven years, but funny enough, we never, we, we, don't, we never really talked about work because we were just kind of hanging out and having fun. <laughs> I think that works great. I think we're good. Oh. And we're gonna do one where he doesn't do anything, and then there's one where he's actually gonna reach up from the ground like, hey, and then you whack down again, like bug and die. Yeah. That's great. Basically, okay. it's we're cheating that you're basically in the middle of that, if that's what camera is. Right. So they 
grew up in different households, different upbringings, and are two completely different people, but the way that it is showcased or presented in the movie is in a very one-dimensional way where, like, you have, like, the popular cool sister that everybody sees as perfect, and then you have, like, the nerdy, quiet sister who everybody thinks is, like, a bit of a, a nuisance. No, a little chubby. Well, there was a home invasion, and uh, he tried to take everything in the China cabinet, but I fought him off. Because <laughs> I love you being sad about that. <laughs> <laughs> and the daughter, and he's like sitting no, there. I can't. Oh, bring it back up. Yeah. No. We had quite a few chats about her wig. <laughs> Well, when you first told me that Catherine was going to have this big curly red hair, I remember thinking, <laughs> I, I'm here for it, but I have no idea how this is going to look. Yeah. And then when I saw it, I thought, this is it. the cheese map, but still, Coach said it counts. Oh, that's fantastic! Way to Daddy. go! I gotta go call my mom. One of the things that I, I think this movie has is it pays homage to so many uh, fun things in the 80s. So if you were around in the 80s, um, there'll just be a lot of hilarious moments. You're, you're telling me there was no, a man in, in here, uh, in the house. Describe the man. Well, he was in disguise. So he had on a I think it would be nice if you did like that beautiful Do we need another watch or what? It looks good now. I mean, I really appreciate Diablo's voice. I think her voice is really, really evident within her writing especially in her humor. It's very forward, it's deeply comedic, but it's really her voice that, that I love about the work that she does. Lisa Swallows is her name, is this girl who isn't heard. She doesn't speak up. She doesn't love herself very much. She doesn't think she matters very much. She's been through a lot of trauma. And uh, she, she brings sh this guy from the dead, this Victorian man, <laughs> who knows how old he is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Like I'm about you're you're about to leave and call the cops and you just grab his arm. Uh huh. So if he's like, I'm gonna go and you just yeah, snag him a little bit. So let's do a couple of those. Kathy gets clearly sees like she clearly understands what Lisa's been through and she she's very empathetic about that, um, but. Lisa has gone through so much that I feel like she's kind of just shut herself out from the world and is not welcoming of anybody that wants to, you know, really be there for her. always been fascinated by the Frankenstein story. You know, when I was growing up in the 80s, there were some sort of modern takes on the Frankenstein story, like weird science, but they always seem to be told from the male perspective. You know, what if a man could create, you know, the perfect woman? And I think even, uh, even as a little girl, I thought to myself, okay, well, what would, what would the uh, female version be? Come check out this whip. <laughs> yeah. So here we have Taffy's bar. Watch your head. I'm watching my head. We got like a little bobblehead guy in there. 
The scream was the most genuine part. <laughs> That's a good way to spend a Friday evening. It's oh. so funny. That's good. And that would be where? Of the, it's the him, top. the invasion. So it's okay. right off the top okay. of secret, not secret invasion. It's a secret but invasion. An invasion. Yeah. There was a secret invasion. <laughs> there was a secret invasion. <laughs> it's finally heard for the first time. It changes everything about her, the fact that someone listens. I always pictured Lisa as this, like, girl who, like, man repeller vibes, like, has no sense of style, comfort over, cute, like, cute, just be comfortable, grandma, and probably wears a lot of her mom's clothes because sh she misses her mother. He's like a little dog. And then in the back we have palm trees. Don't know why. Welcome to 1989. Even though Taffy is constantly trying to show her that, it's just hard to break through because she just feels like everybody's out to get her or everybody just doesn't understand her. Um, and that's what makes it so magical, I think, because it's very realistic, I would say. No! 